key story that said, remember, 55% of individuals that got to see Hillary when she was Secretary of State were either donors or people committing money to the foundation. Now, add that to the Haiti story. They raised this money, separate list for foundation donors and friends of Bill so they can cash in on the contracts after 150,000 people died and they raised money and they would be first in line to make more money so they can funnel it back to the Clinton Foundation. How does this not get picked up? How is this not Watergate in the minds of the rest of the media? Well, it's beginning to get picked up. You know, I think uh, somebody pointed out that on Morning Joe, they spent 13 minutes attacking the Clintons this morning. Now, that's that's unheard of. That's that's a breakdown in elite media discipline that is hard to imagine. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see by tomorrow, where's the Washington Post? Where's the New York Times? This stuff's getting so big and smelling so bad that I think they're going to have a very hard time hiding from it. Uh, you know, if the Federal Bureau of Investigation was still a law enforcement agency, uh, we would have a grand jury impaneled uh, to be taking testimony right now and not negotiating but issuing subpoenas. Well, wait a minute. I beg to differ. Uh, and oh, no, they're the, a law enforcement organization because if you did it, they would have impaneled that grand jury by now. If I did it, that grand jury would be impaneled right now. Therein lies a big problem we have with our Justice Department. Right, because, because that's not law enforcement. That's selective prosecution. Law enforcement says that all of us are under the law. All of us have to obey the law. All of us have to face the same consequences. We know, we know for a fact from all this stuff that you, you have uh, the head of the Clinton campaign, John Podesta, going off to dinner with the Justice Department. You have weird negotiations with various Clinton officials, things nobody gets from the FBI. You have the president of the former president and the attorney general meeting on a plane in secret the same week they're going to interrogate Hillary. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that in a place like Venezuela you would understand because they don't have the rule of law. But what we're seeing right now, and WikiLeaks in this sense, is ripping the scar off of the largest amount of corruption in American history. This, this beats any prior corruption scandal I know of, including uh, the 1868 the period where Grant was president, including the Harding administration, I mean, including some of the things that happened under Truman, none of those things are like this. This is the largest scandal affecting a senior American politician, I think, in the history of the United States. And it's, as you yourself just pointed out, you have Hillary Clinton clearly trading on the office of Secretary of State in a way which has to be, a, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer, but my guess is you've got probably 60 or 70 counts against her just in terms of scheduling people uh, to and come into her office. And yet she could be elected president. Who they knew. And yet according money. to polls, she's she in this be. race. In 12 days, she could possibly win right. this election. What does that say? That's right. Well, it says that our country is a, is a culture in crisis. Our country has got to decide, does the rule of law apply to everyone? Or are we now going to be a country where some people are above the law, and no matter how corrupt they are, you know, putting Bill Clinton back in the White House, given everything we're learning, uh, I think would be almost a sign of sickness. And I, I personally, this is why I've always told you I thought that she would lose and Donald Trump would win. In the end, I don't think the majority of American people are going to put somebody who is a liar and a crook in the White House. I, I, I just I have enough faith in the American people that when they get down to voting, and I've had several people say this to me this week, that when they got right down to it, they simply couldn't vote for her. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We have more with Newt Gingrich right after this break and also come. I have to say, the media now, they're going wild. The media is going wild because they're saying, you know, this guy's winning. That was Donald Trump slamming the liberal mainstream media at a campaign stop that was in Springfield, Ohio, but that's not all. During a sit-down interview with ABC's George Stephanopoulos, Donald Trump explained just how unfairly he is being treated by the liberal press. Take a look. How was the 2012 election? Because I look at the way the media treats the Republicans and conservatives, and I see the way it's so skewed. But Robert, you call the whole election so... a sham and a travesty. Oh, well, I think it was uh, horrible the way they were treated in the media. The only thing worse is the way I'm being treated. Look, I'm being treated. Hey, it's record-setting bad treatment, what I'm getting. It's the greatest pile-on in American history. I go to these rallies, and 
they're starting to hate the media because they see it's all a big lie and not all but a lot of it's a big lie and we continue with former speaker of the house newt gingrich the greatest pile on in history in many ways you know we've discussed for example last night we've learned from wikileaks that a lot of these reporters mainstream media they're being wined and dined by the Clinton campaign. And this is from ABC, the Associated Press, Bloomberg, CBS, CNBC, CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, Political, Reuters, The Hill, The Wall Street Journal. It, I never got the invitation. Did you get one? Because I've never been invited to any of these things. Well, I don't think you're going to be either. No, I don't want to uh, be. I, mean, I really don't, I don't want I don't, it. I don't. I don't think I don't think the Clintons have you on their list of possible allies. But let me tell you uh, one other thing. I've never been to Mar-a-Lago. I've never stayed in a Trump hotel. I've never been to a Trump golf course either, and never been invited there either. Everyone hates me, I guess. I, you know what's up with that? I'm beginning to get a complex. Well, I don't know. I think you know. I'm I'm, I'm confident that if you ask Donald, we'll get you on a golf course. I'll pay my way. I don't need anything. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I don't. That's right. You're you're. But you're doing fine. Look, a couple quick things. Just so the audience gets a full flavor of this, and let me say, by the way, because I know you're going to cover it later on in a very important part of this show, the New Deal for African Americans and for the black community is a really big idea. Donald Trump has done more to communicate concern and to communicate solutions to the African American community than any Republican presidential candidate in my lifetime. And the speech yesterday was a big deal. And, and I know it's going to be on later on the show tonight. I just want to tell you, I think people should note how many things he's saying and doing that are substantive. His contract with the American voter, which, again, as a guy who wrote the contract with America, I'm very sympathetic to contracts. It's a great contract. Everybody should go look at it uh, and, and should see uh, that the, at the website for the contract that, in fact, this is something that's real. It is specific. It is totally different from where Hillary Clinton would take us. Uh, and I think these are big breakthroughs. But you're not going to see much of it in the elite media because it's all positive. I actually have, and this is actually signed by Trump. This is his contract with America. Now, he talks about six measures to clean up corruption, drain the swamp, as he calls it, special interests, seven actions to protect American workers, five actions to restore uh, security and constitutional rule of law, middle class tax simplification, ending uh, end the Offshoring Act, American Energy and Infrastructure Act, School Choice and Education Opportunity Act, Repeal and Replace Obamacare Act, Affordable Child Care and Elder Care Act, Illegal and the Illegal Immigration Act, Restoring Community Safety Act, Restoring National Security Act, and Cleaning Up Corruption in Washington. There are two pages. I put it up on my website, Hannity.com, and people say he's not substantive. They don't want to cover it for the substance of Donald Trump. They don't want to cover this. And maybe he needs to do what you did when you were running, pull it out of his pocket in every interview and say, this is what I'm going to do. I don't want to talk about A, B, and C, what you want to talk about. Okay. He, I mean, I, I think he should probably hold it up at every single rally and tell people that they can go to his website and they can sign up. And they can be part of this contract between him and the American people. And, if, and, and I think, he, you know, because we did it and he knows that we knows how we did it. He knows we kept our word when he knows we voted on every single thing in the 1994 contract with America. And I think he's trying to make a case here that he is really committed to very, very dramatic change. And I think it's pathetic that the New York Times, the Washington Post, et cetera, NBC, CBS, ABC, none of these guys can can serve America by letting them see that there is a real alternative. I mean, it's, it's almost unpatriotic to have the level of deliberate disinformation and deliberate censorship that we're getting out of the elite media. Uh, and, I, and I think it, it's something the average American gets. And one of the reasons you're getting these huge voter turnouts, I think, is to send a signal to the news media, you're not going to dictate to us that we have to vote for some corrupt left winger. Uh, we're going